The Cochrane Library is an important evidence-based practice database. It includes a collection of databases, um, including the very important Cochrane database of systematic reviews. You can see on the evidence-based practice subject guide for the library, there's a list of the different databases within Cochrane Library. So the Cochrane Database of Systematic Reviews um, is very important for the students and the one you will use the most. And it contains more than 8,000 systematic reviews at this moment. Um, but it does have other databases and you can use the other databases to find information as well. So the Cochrane Central Register of Controlled Trials includes randomized controlled trials. The database of abstracts of reviews of effects includes um, systematic reviews on uh, healthcare interventions and uh, pol healthcare policy and practice. The Cochrane Library um, is based in the United Kingdom, so the healthcare policy and practice has a uh, favors um, the British health services and how their health system is structured. So keep that in mind. The Health Technology Assessment Database um, has health technology assessments and uh, of course the um, National Health Service Economic Evaluation Database um, has economic evaluations of healthcare interventions and again um, National Health Service is the British um, healthcare system so again that might be favoring their um, analysis of their own economic uh, structure for their health care. So I'm going to show you how to search PICO using um, the database. So we're going to work with the PICO that Dr. Nelson had presented. So we're looking using uh, patients receiving chemotherapy or experiencing moderate nausea and vomiting. Um, we're looking at are they using, does ginger, is ginger as effective as promethazine in reducing nausea and vomiting? So we're going to go back and try this. Now you can put a simple keyword search into the database from this screen and select a, a variety of ways to narrow it down. The librarian tends to favor the advanced search screen because I can be more complicated in my searches when I do that. So I can start with ginger and just look for the words in the title abstract and keywords. I can also add additional search words as well. By clicking the plus sign, I can keep adding rows and other search terms. You cannot do a search if I take the word out and hit go. I will get an error message, so I have to remove any rows that I am not using to do the search. To start with, I'm actually going to just go with this simple search and show you what kind of results you get, and then we can get become more complicated. Your results show up below. So I can see that I have two results from the Cochrane Reviews database, and that is the Cochrane Systematic Reviews. If I hold my mouse over that title, it will tell me that that's what I'm looking at. Um, two is pretty small, but this is not a huge database. You may recall that for to do a systematic review, um, the authors have to go out and find randomized controlled trials that are similar enough so that they can compare them and do analysis to decide whether or not a, uh, it shows a positive or negative effect. And you have to have enough randomized controlled trials in the world to be able to do an analysis. So you're, it also takes a very long time to do, con conduct, and analyze a systematic review and get it published. So these publications are not being published very, very quickly. They take time to do and to do right. Um, so you're not going to find a million hits. That's why we've got 
8,635 8, records that we can see in Cochrane Reviews. Right now I'm looking at all the records in Cochrane Reviews. I can click Review to see which ones have been completed. So I know they've actually um, completed the entire review. If I click Protocol, that shows me which ones are new and in process. And of the two that we have right now, none of them are in process. You also have some codes over here. And I can use those to see that the NS means new search. So the first one, Interventions for Nausea and Vomiting in Early Pregnancy, is a new search. And notice if I hold my mouse there, it gives me a pop-up that it explains this to me. So you can move your mouse around to learn about the database, particularly when it's new to you, to find out um, where you need to go and what you need to do. I'm not seeing um, any comment here about uh, chemotherapy or uh, for ginger. So these are not precisely what I want, but I can show you as an example how they display the information. So if I click on the of title of the article, then it will open up any new tab. So my search is still back here. You see an abstract. Here's the information about the given um, systematic review. Down here, I get an abstract of the systematic review, which will very quickly, I can just read the abstract and get an idea of what was done, how it was done, and what the uh, conclusions were. So they list all of this very quickly for you. So that even without reading the entire systematic review, you can learn that this showed that um, there's a lack of high quality evidence to support any particular intervention. Basically, they're waiting for more, better randomized controlled trials to be done so that they can redo this analysis and see um, whether or not ginger is actually having an effect or not. Below the abstract is a plain language summary. So if this is using language that is too technical for the reader, they can go down and use the plain language summary to f figure out what was done. And in this case, they also have, um, looks like a French translation as well in other languages. So that's the abstract. You also get, click on article, and I get the full article, the full publication in PDF and HTML. If I want to see the PDF, then I can click over here on full to open up the PDF and take that with me. And all the same parts from the HTML will be in the PDF. If they did a search in this database, then I can scroll down. They have to report what search they used to retrieve their randomized controlled trials. And the librarian finds that very interesting sometimes to see if they're using different keywords than the librarian has been using or is planning to use. As you can see results, you can see a lot of detail about how they chose studies, what's, why they chose studies, why they excluded studies, what kind of bias might be apparent. Um, lots of interesting information if you're looking at uh, analyzing um, research. It can be useful. Now this one was not exactly what we were interested in. This was looking for um, interventions for early pregnancy. The figures tab will show you any of those charts and tables. You can jump right to them that were in the full full publication. And the tables, of course, will show you the tables on the charts. 
uh, references, if they used randomized controlled trials in their um, publication, they would be listed here. So you can go and find those publications. Use this to find those publications yourself if they happen to be relevant to you. And sometimes these uh, are updated on occasion. So here's the March 2014. But this, this may, often they'll redo these as more check and see, are more randomized controlled trials available? Are more randomized controlled trials available? And, and they'll come back and, and update it because new research is being done all the time. So I'll go back to our search. Having shown you that display and how that's laid out, I also want to point out there are other reviews available too. These may be systematic reviews as all, but they are not as well, but they are not Cochrane systematic reviews. Cochrane oversees the production of the systematic reviews done under their name and ensures a certain level of quality to those systematic reviews. These other reviews um, do not include any guarantee that they have that same kind of oversight. Um, but Cochrane understands that maybe they have some good ones in there and maybe they have value and maybe they are well done. So they provide those to you as well. Now these may be systematic reviews, as you can see here, but they may be other kinds of reviews. They may be literature reviews or intervention reviews or, or etc. So evaluate them whenever you're looking at them. And I do see some here that do look interesting. And if I'm interested in the use of ginger for chemotherapy, nausea resulting from chemotherapy, then I would go down and look through these. So ginger for prevention of treatment of drug-induced nausea and vomiting. They don't name the drug, but that would uh, I'd want to take a look at that and see. There's early pregnancy again. There's pregnancy again. Uh, here, ginger and chemotherapy induced nausea and vomiting, a systematic literature review. Mark that one. Uh, interventions for nausea and vomiting early pregnancy. Efficacy of ginger for nausea and vomiting. This doesn't specify, they just look at it whether it's chemotherapy or not, so that would interest me. I'd want to take a look at that one. Get more information. And here's post-operative nausea and vomiting. So there were three that I want to take uh, a look. So I'm going to click on the first one. It's not a full publication. It's not a Cochrane publication. But it does provide some information about it. And it gives you some citation information. So I can go look for that. And I went and pulled up more information prior to recording this. So I don't have the full text, but I can go to the journal website and pull up the abstract, which is providing more information than the Cochrane database. It does tell me the keywords that they used, which I can make a note of. I'd say write those down and consider using them whenever you go to uh, Medline or CINAHL or any of the other uh, health databases. Keep track of things like that, search possible search words or strategies that you could use. And they do say that they're considered chemotherapy as well as post-operation and pregnancy. So this did include our chemotherapy topic. So this is one that I'd want to look at just to see what kind of findings uh, they found and to use the publications that they found um, whenever I'm doing my research. So that was the first one. The next one, systematic ginger Zingiver, officinale, <laughs> and chemotherapy induced nausea and vomiting, etc., etc. So, this is a systematic review, but not a Cochrane systematic review.
and I would find this one interesting as well. And I did use our finding full text strategies to acquire, pull up the full text and look at it. And so it is, a, you can get it using the finding full text strategies. And again, go through it and see what search words did they use. and learn from what other people have done before you. And the last one as well has some relation to it, to our topic. That was efficacy of, I don't think I was able to go ex precisely to that one. Yeah, British Journal of Anesthesia. That one I, I haven't pulled up the full text yet. It's an older one, but I might, because it's, if, if it's related to our topic, then I might be inclined to want to look at it, even if it's just to um, rule it out, and rule, because it might list publications that are interesting to me and relevant. Now back to the results. We looked at the Cochrane reviews, and we looked at other reviews, but we can see the randomized controlled trials as well. So you can pull those up using Cochrane. Uh, and we can see information from the other databases. And they actually tell us how many items are in the other databases. So you can get some idea about uh, whether or not they're, they're findable, whether any other kind of analysis is being done. Now you can do other sorts of searches here. I can go to the medical terms, medical subject headings, and look for ginger. Um, if you looked at some of the other databases, you know that there's a ginger and there's wild gingers. This search here for medical terms is actually going to look for ginger in the mesh headings, the medical subject headings. Um, and if, you, if there is a mesh heading, the rule of thumb is use it to search instead of just a keyword search. And it does break down uh, our plant, our ginger, down into its uh, taxonomic uh, structure. Like I said, I'm a biologist, so that's familiar to me, though probably meaningless to you. And it tells me that uh, I've got a couple of ways to search. Asarum is referring to the wild ginger, and this referring to ginger. To go ahead and search for this, explode all trees. I can actually see over here that one was listed under the mesh heading for ginger. And there are 80 results for my search, and it tells me how, whenever I pull up the results, how those are going to going to be viewed. And I bet the one Cochrane review that is showing is the one one that we've already found. Yeah, this was one that we'd already seen when we did our search previously. So that's another way to um, search and to use Cochrane to try to find information. Now the Cochrane library, back to our basic search, it le finds level one evidence for you, but there is not level one evidence. There are not systematic reviews done on every topic. So this is one that I would always search, but I would not be upset or discouraged if your topic is not in here, because there simply have not, has not been time to do systematic reviews for every topic that is important or of interest. But do check it to see if it will find a systematic review on your topic for you. When I do a search, you notice that I just put ginger into there. I, because it's not a huge database, I prefer to do a broad search and then just sift through the results myself. So if I broaden the search and search for ginger in all text, for example, I get 28 records, 28 Cochrane reviews. And 28 is a small enough number for me to go through 
and just eyeball them and see whether or not they're relevant to my topic. And whenever I do go through, they are looking at ginger and they are considering it, but it, again, we're not finding anything new. It's osteoporosis and asthma and gingivitis and one was aromatherapy using ginger and other um, uh, substances. So, but 28 is a small enough number for me to go through myself just to make sure I haven't missed anything. I keep it broad, I, but I bring back four, 28 articles and just go through and see whether or not they're good for me. Um, so hopefully this has helped you with a very quick overview of Cochrane. And please see the librarian if you have any questions.